Hi friends. Every year in your school health checkups takes place. They check the height and the body weight of the students to make sure that the students are healthy, fit and fine. Now this is a lot of data and we have to display it in an easier way for the students to understand it in a better manner. Now here if I will ask you that what's Meena's height? Well it will take a lot of time for you to find out the answer. Now if I'll ask you what's the number of students above the height of 150 cm? This is again going to be a very tedious task. So in order to save time, we arrange this data in the form of groups, like say in the form of a group of 10. Now this is called as a grouped frequency table. But here if I'll ask you what's Meena's height? Will you be able to answer it? No, right? In an ungrouped data, you can get the precise value of a particular event, but the same is not possible for the grouped data. Have you ever thought that just a picture might be enough to represent a data of hundreds of students? This grouped data can be represented in just one graph paper, giving you the entire overview of the hundred students. Well, statistics can help us with that. There are varieties of ways that can help us to represent this data. Do you remember that in our previous session, we learnt about various ways that can be used to represent the data. So, from this chart, we will learn about histogram in this session. But what exactly is this histogram? Doesn't this look like bar diagram that we did in our previous session, just without the gaps, right? Well, there's way more than that about histogram. We have our grouped frequency table. So using this data, let's learn how we can make a histogram. Before that, we need to have a look at the rules or the instructions that we need to make a histogram. The first important thing is the classes should be continuous. Now this is one of the most important rule or the condition that we need to look for while plotting and if the given data or classes are not in the continuous form, then we will have to make it continuous. Now here, if we have the height of a student as 130.5 or 150.5, where will you plot these points? Now this is one of the most important reason to make the classes continuous so that we cover all the data that we have received. Now, how do we do that? First, we take the difference between the lower limit of the next class, that is 131, and we take the upper limit of the previous class, that is 130, which comes to 1. Now, we take half of the difference, which comes to 1 by 2, or you can say 0 0.5. Now, we add this difference in the upper limits, and we subtract this difference from the lower limits. This is how our continuous grouped frequency table looks like. Now the basic steps remains the same. Mark the class on the x-axis. Here we cannot start from 10, 20 and so on. So for this we make a crink mark. After putting this mark we can start our classes from 120.5 and so on. Mark the numbers or frequencies on the y-axis using the suitable scale. Now we choose the scale that can fit the biggest frequency. In this case, the number is 66. So we'll make a scale accordingly to this. We also have to make sure that we can easily see the difference between the classes and not to take two small scales for a bigger paper. Now we can make rectangles corresponding to the frequencies on x-axis and we make sure that the class width is kept constant and in this way the graph so obtained is called as a histogram which is a graphical representation of a grouped frequency distribution with continuous class. Now let's learn one more interesting fact about histogram. Here the area covered by the rectangular bars 
is directly proportional to the frequency. Now in this case you may say that how does it have any impact whether the area corresponds to the frequencies or not, right? But have a look at this histogram. This is a graph saying the weights of the students in the same class. Now here we can observe that the first class is having a width of 40 kgs and the last class is having a width of 30 kgs while the rest of the classes are having a width of just 10 kg. Now does this graph give us a correct picture? Uh, if I'll ask you how many students weigh between 20 to 30, you will say 40. And the same answer will be for the weights between 0 to 10 or 10 to 20 or 30 to 40, right? But isn't that the wrong answer? Well, in order to obtain the correct way to represent this kind of data, there are few just simple steps to follow. Now here, the minimum class width is 10, right? So in order to graph the class 0 to 40, we have to make it appropriate as per the class width of 10. We can make four classes here, 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30 and 30 to 40. Now we will divide the frequency by 4 which will give us 10. Now here it can be seen that the area of the histogram represents the proper frequency. The same will be done for the class 70 to 100. Here three classes will be made. So we will divide the frequency by 3 which will give us 9 and we will plot 9 on the graph. Now this histogram will give us a true and fair depiction of the data that we are representing. This is how we draw a histogram and reading the histogram is also same as bar diagram only. Well, France just won the FIFA World Cup this year. In our next session, we will be learning about how to plot a frequency polygon and also how to read the same using the various statistics from the FIFA World Cup 2018. I hope you have enjoyed this session. Don't forget to hit the like button. Please do subscribe to our channel. And yes, do not forget to hit the bell icon to get the new updates. Till then, keep watching, keep learning. Thank you.